So what if you wanted to move your workload off of a cloud provider and they told you no? What would happen then? Let's talk about it. Well, welcome back to the Cloud Insider, where we discuss the realities of cloud computing and generative AI. I'm your host, David Lenticum, author, speaker, b geek, and here to talk to you about the truth behind cloud computing and how to use it effectively. Well, this topic came out of uh, a conversation I had with a friend of mine a few weeks back where um, she was looking to move uh, off her cloud provider, in essence, move a workload uh, from a cloud provider actually onto another cloud provider, but it could have been as easily a uh, cloud, uh, cloud managed platform, or in this case, a uh, um, uh, repatriating to an on-premise system, whatever. And she was told no. So she said, I'm uh, you know, going to take my application and my data and go someplace else. And the cloud provider said, no, you can't. So what do you do then? And what are the scenarios where you're, you may be uh, unable to move off the provider, at least easily? Well, the first one in the case with my friend is contractual obligations. You have to pay attention to the cloud contracts that you sign. Um, they're very legal easy, and uh, sometimes they're going to talk to you about canceling the contract or canceling the contract early, and they may prevent you from doing that. You have to remember that uh, leveraging a cloud provider is like renting an apartment or leasing a car, and you have a certain amount of obligations that you agree to uh, to allow to for them to allow you access to the cloud service, and therefore they may have some contractual control on the way you exit. So sometimes they have to get, you have to give them a ninety days notice. Sometimes you have to give them a year's notice. Sometimes you have to pay uh, pay out the contract. So in other words, if, if you want to exit all of the cloud contract early, you're going to have to pay for the remainder of the contract, even though you're not using those services. So there's lots of gotchas there, and you have to pay attention. The core thing there is pay attention to what you sign. These cloud contracts need to be rever reviewed by attorneys. We need to understand what we're signing, and we need to consider all scenarios. What if uh, they are not not providing the services up to the quality that we need, uh, too many outages, things like that? And what if we need to move out of the cloud earlier than we thought because we have some sort of a change to the business or something's going on, which means we need to move our workload to another cloud provider. In the case of my friend, are we moving it back on premise? Are we doing something else with it? You would feel that you're free to move your workloads where, and your data wherever you want to move them. Uh, you have to read the contract as to how that's going to impact you financially if you're moving off of, of particular cloud providers. So another reason which may cause you some grief when moving off of a cloud provider is data migration and retention policies. Some cloud providers have specific policies regarding data retention and migration uh, when the services are canceled. So in other words, um, sometimes you're not allowed to migrate the data off of that cloud in a certain amount of time. Uh, sometimes they're going to charge you a penalty for moving your data off the cloud, which may be uneconomically viable. In other words, you're not going to get a good business benefit from moving off of that cloud provider early. Uh, again, it's lots of contact contractual things that come in the way, but you have to read the fine print in terms of the data retention and migration policies that the cloud provider is putting forward. They're going to charge you in many cases for the ability to move and the cost of moving your data off the cloud provider. Uh, it's not going to be as straightforward as you think. So migrating to the cloud provider may have gone pretty well. Now that you built you know, a petabyte of data up on that cloud provider your ability to migrate it off of that provider uh, could end up costing you more than you think. You have to read the bottom lines, read the contracts, and understand what the impediments are to making that happen. Next would be dispute resolution procedures. Um, while you think you can have uh, take the data provi uh, the cloud provider to court, um, there's normally in these contracts uh, ways in which you're going to resolve disputes. A lot of times it's going to be uh, arbitration, uh, it's going to be lots of different things, which may not mean that you're able to take them to court uh, to uh, argue uh, your issues around a particular contract. And so if you're looking to exit a provider, look at what the latency is and look at what the procedures are in making that happen if there's some sort of dispute on the contract. So several times I had clients that had uh, outages, they had um, uh, service level agreements that were consistently violated. So they felt uh, within their rights to move their applications and their databases off of the cloud. 
and get their money back or at least get the money back for the for the uh, the rest of the contract that was going to go unfulfilled. And they weren't allowed to do that. They had to, in essence, go to binding arbitration to make that happen and argue in front of a uh, uh, their judge or arbitrator uh, in terms of what their issues are. And that person made the decision as to whether or not they could get their money back and move it off the cloud. In some cases, they may say no. So in other words, you're not going to be able to get your money back. So you can either take a loss uh, here by uh, throwing away the the remaining uh, the remaining money in the account, the remaining money on the contract, or uh, it's just or you're you're not going to be able to uh, pull your data off of there and pull your applications off there in the way that you thought you could pull them off there. So again, dispute resolution is going to be part of it. You have to read the contracts, see how they resolve these things. In lots of cases, they're going to say you can't use the courts. You have to go to an arbitrator. So that means there's a lot of latency in going through these processes and procedures. So next would be regulatory and compliance requirements. Um, if you have regulated data that exists on that cloud provider, there may be a legal reason why you can't move it off of that provider. In the case of HIPAA, PII information, personally identifiable information, there's laws and regulations that govern how that data is going to be managed. And you could find yourself uh, against those regulations in wanting to move that information, even if it's your data, off of those systems to another cloud provider, in this case on-premise. There's lots of regulations and processes that come into bear there. And so in many instances, they're going to find that it's not as straightforward as they would think in migrating their data or migrating their applications from a cloud provider, certainly if it's uh, processes and data that are that are going to be impacted by regulation. HIPAA is an example. Uh, EU, in terms of their data uh, privacy standards, your inability to ship data out of the country in some instances. So you have to check to see what those issues are before you decide to move off of the cloud and put those into the budget in terms of costs and expenses, things you need to do. Uh, to mitigate the risk with that. Because you run afoul of a regulation, you're going to get fined. It's not going to be a good thing. And this is a big one. Technical and architectural dependencies. In other words, we've built our applications around particular native cloud APIs. In other words, APIs that are proprietary to that cloud provider. And you're going to find in many cases that it's not going to be very cost effective to move to another cloud or to move it on premise because you're going to have to redesign and reprogram the system to leverage new security services, new governance services, new storage services, because you've bound them into the native services of a single particular cloud provider. So you're locked into that provider. So in these cases, it could be economically unviable for you to move to another cloud or move it back on premise because of the amount of changes and investment that has to be made in that application. So a lot of people are locked into cloud providers or stuck there because not that they couldn't move it. Everybody can move data and move applications off those things if you have enough time and money, if you're allowed to do so. Uh, it's the matter of the money, amount of investment that has to be made in reprogramming, rebuilding those applications. So they're leveraging other native services and other platforms. So you need to consider what that cost is uh, before you go with a particular cloud provider and have some sort of an exit plan in terms of how you're going to move off of that provider and how much money needs to be spent on making that happen. You need to think about this before it happens. So the next impediment to moving off a cloud provider would be automatic renewals. And I see this a ton because you're not paying attention to your cloud contract and it comes up for renewal. You never hear about it because it automatically takes place. We know about this with Almost every service we sign up for on the internet, they're always going to have triggers in there and contractual statements, which will automatically re renew those services, whether you like it or not. If you agreed upon it, they're going to go ahead and renew it. So you're you're going to find you get into a five-year contact contract with a cloud provider. And at the end of the five years, even though you have plans of moving off of that provider back to on-premise or to another cloud provider, for example there is an automatic renewal that's taken place. And therefore you're obligated to another five years of leveraging that provider or else you're gonna to have to pay a lot of money to get out of the contract because you're in essence violating the contract because it's automatically renewed with a single trigger. So you need to watch out for those things. I think it always comes back to contractual obligations 
uh, you're dealing with another party. You need to read the agreements. The cloud providers are really good at writing agreements that are very complex, and they're going to have things that are normally geared toward their benefit. So you, within the negotiation process, you need to make sure all of these under understood, all of these issues are understood, and that you've considered different scenarios in terms of you leaving that cloud provider, what happens, uh, what kind of recourse do you have, and what are the big thing is what are the financial penalties for making that move. So watch out for the automatic renewals. Almost all of the cloud contracts that I see out there have those. Uh, and they're going to be difficult because people are not necessarily paying to watch those when they're going to occur. And suddenly you're obligated for longer to be in that cloud provider than you want to or need to be. So last one would be suspension for violation of terms. Uh, and this is a tricky one. So in other words, a cloud provider may accuse you of doing something that you're not allowed to do as being their customer operating on their platform, and therefore they're going to lock you into the platform or cause you to pay an excessive amount of money to move off that platform um, based on decisions that they made and sometimes arbitrary decisions. Uh, I had a case one time where the cloud provider accused them of doing illegal activity, uh, which they weren't doing, and you know, therefore they uh, suspended their account. They locked their data up. They wouldn't let them go. Uh, they they uh, put a lot of uh, fines and and fees associated with this. And the per the clients uh, spent uh, almost a half a million dollars to three quarters of a million dollars in paying the fines and fees to get their data and get their applications off of this particular provider. I wouldn't say that's a common occurrence. Uh, this was a very small provider they were dealing with, um, but there are cases where you're going to be obligated to perform in a certain way based on assumptions that they make that, that you may have violated your terms or violated the law or something like that. Again, pay attention to the contract. Uh, make sure that this is dealt with in very specific terms so we know what your rights are in terms of migrating off of that particular cloud provider. And, and watch out and read the reviews on some of these providers, you're going to find that uh, the providers out there, normally the smaller ones that pull this kind of stuff, uh, are, they're going to be well-known. And so just stay away from them. If they have a bad reputation, there's a reason why. And so you don't want to do business with any company that is like that, including cloud providers. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, don't forget to Read my InfoWorld blog. Uh, don't forget to check out my courses on LinkedIn Learning. And don't forget about my new generative AI architecture course. It's out on Go Cloud Careers. You can use the uh, QR code above and uh, get to that one as well. So in the meantime, everybody be safe. I'll talk to you at the next video. Cheers.